like it might be interesting. Hypnosis. <laughs> I really chose psychology as a major because I wanted to learn how to do hypnosis. How's that for sovereign stumbling? Call of God in your life. I want to do hypnosis. Uh, so I went into undergraduate, I majored in journalism. I didn't feel I wanted to be a small town newspaper reporter, so I quit that. Went into athletics, I'm a mediocre athlete, so I quit that. So psychology, when I finished undergraduate psychology, somebody said to me, you can't do much with a bachelor's, you might go out and get a doctorate. And I went, oh, okay. So I went and got a doctorate in psychology, and I what I was doing. First year of graduate school, I gave up Christianity. Because it seemed to me that psychology was speaking into the human soul in a way my church never had. And that really bugged me. So I decided I'm not going to believe anything because my parents raised me to be a Christian. And, um, and I wrestled, and that's another thing I really appreciate that Tim said, that I do wrestle. But that's not so much of a choice. I don't, I don't have a choice about that. I'm just so confused. I, I don't, I'm more confused now after 58 years of knowing Jesus than I've ever been. But I'm more sure of a few things. I'm very certain of very little, but I'm certain of what I'm certain of. And um, so my journey has been long, and I've been all over the place, and um, trained at the University of Illinois, my doctor's degree, and it was a very behavioral school. We had some Adlerian professors, uh, had a touch of object relations and some other theory, did some systems work, um, a lot of marriage work. Um, but I've been all over the place with that, and then I went into private practice for 10 years, and, and I left private practice to teach counseling because it really occurred to me that, that the people that I was helping the most were the people that I was relating to the best. And so I thought I really want to think about what relationships are like, and that's what I got to the Trinity. So, so I've had a journey that just continues to this day. A journey of not being really sure of myself, but a journey of being more grateful for God than I've ever been in my life. I had cancer 14 years ago. I almost died. I came to six hours of death. And um, the night before surgery, I was in the hospital. My wife had to leave at 9 o'clock. Visiting hours were over. She went home. She told me she cried all the way home. Surgery the next morning, life and death was either was possible or the surgeon for time. Then. I got up that night and I went to the window of St. Joe's Hospital, ninth floor. I looked down. And I saw Starbucks down there. I was close to the, uh, the theater district of Denver, and I, I remember just looking down and thinking, you know, I really wish I were down there, as opposed to up here. I'm a patient in a hospital going to have cancer surgery tomorrow. I wish I was in that car that just pulled into Starbucks, where a couple got out. I wish that was me and Rachel, that we had just been to a wonderful play, and had just enjoyed that, and we're now stopping for a little light cap of a latte and a lemon bar, and then going to go home, and Saturday night in church tomorrow morning. That's the life I want. I don't want the life up here facing possible death. Major surgery, at the very least, obviously. I don't want that, and I was very troubled by it. As I was standing there looking out the window, um, with a couple getting out of their car and going into Starbucks, and just envisioning how badly I wanted to be there. But, um, I really believe the Holy Spirit, well, I think I'm a little less afraid of that. <laughs> I believe he spoke to me, and I believe he reminded me of something I had read years earlier by Augustine, the old church father. He, 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 he suggested a parable to think about um, back in early centuries, and he said this, he said, a parable that I thought of that night in the hospital, he said, I want you to imagine God coming to you and saying to you, make a list of everything that you want. Everything that you want. There's no, no limit, just lose, get yourself into the wildest dreams, everything you want, a great ministry, a great marriage, great kids, great health, great whatever, all the things you want. Make a list of all these things, Augustine said. And then imagine after God told you to make that list, he came to you, and he said to you, I will give you everything on that list on one condition, that you'll agree you will never see my face. And Augustine said, the chill that you feel in your soul when you contemplate never meeting God is, the chill is your love for God. When I thought about that, something just changed. I thought, you know what? I'd rather be up here 
letting God use whatever I'm going to go through to meet him more deeply and to know him deeply no matter what the cost. I'd rather be up here than down there enjoying my life, enjoying the theater, enjoying my wife, enjoying Starbucks, enjoying church the next morning, and not really knowing God. God, if this is your path for me to know you, I welcome it. And I went back to bed that night. I just climbed back into my hospital bed. I was so full of joy. I really was. I wish it were sustained. I'm broken down still. And I can tell you one more thing that I'm going to include when I want you to talk to me. Here's the last thing I want to say. Um, when, when you're really hurting, scared, going through hard times, do we understand the power that we have in talking to somebody else who's hurting like that? I had a lot of wonderful visits when I was in the hospital 14 years ago. And um, one of the visits was by phone. You ever heard of a guy named Dr. James Houston? Is that a name that you know? He's written some books. He's 88 years old. He was a personal student of C.S. Lewis. He founded Regent College, not Regent University, but Regent College in Vancouver. And he's just an incredible, deep man of the faith, a powerful, powerful man. I was with him, I've been with him a number of times. I was with him one night just talking in his living room. I was a guest at his home, and we were talking till midnight with this incredible man of God. I was sharing my struggles, and when our conversation was over, it was midnight. I had to speak the next morning at Regent College, and he said, oh, he has time for us to go to sleep. I think, you know, he's a Scottish old man. And um, I was in a Scottish impersonation. And, um, and when we finished talking, I went into my bedroom, and I literally lost strength in my legs. I collapsed on the floor. And I wept for half an hour, and I said, God, I will pay any price to know Jesus the way that man knows Jesus. Is that your energy when you counsel? Is that how you're going to be a private practitioner? Is that going to be in your soul? Well, Dr. Houston, when I was in the hospital, he called me up. And I answered the phone. I had a feeding tube in my, or some kind of a tube here. I'm not sure what the tubes were, but I had a bunch of them. I had a tube in here, I had intravenous in both arms, and I had all kinds of complications for surgery in the hospital for three weeks post-surgery, and all kinds of complications, pancreatitis, all sorts of things came to me. And um, the phone rang about a week after the surgery. I was still in pretty bad shape, and I kind of reached over clumsily with all the tubes and wires and picked up the phone and said, hello. And the conversation went literally like this. No exaggeration, it's in my mind as if it happened yesterday. But I said, Jim, who's been going? Oh, Dr. Who's been so good to you going? Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Up here at Regent College, we've heard that you have cancer, and I've heard so many people say, poor Larry, poor Larry, oh, people are saying, poor Larry. I wanted to call you to say, I'm not saying that, no, 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 no. I'm saying, privilege, Larry, yes, privilege, Larry, you are in commander training, and he hung up. I went back in bed, and I laughed. With joy. Something that was alive in him because of Christ came out of his soul and entered mine. And I was enlightened in my spirit by words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Any questions?